right, you guys, finally got the Titanium 125 Flux. And I'm gonna speed through this unboxing real quick and just show you guys the content. So uh, let's get opening this thing. So the contents of the box, got a little backpack strap. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use that on my shoulder, but hey, it came with it. Probably about a pound of uh, 030 wire, shielded wire. Manual, came with two contactor tips and three tip covers. And um, I measured out these things and the ground clamp and the MIG gun is about six and a half feet long. And they actually gave you a fair generous amount of uh, wire for the plug-in. It's about eight feet long, so that's kind of nice. Like any cheaper welder, this is kind of a cheapo clamp. You're gonna get that with a cheapie. And uh, this will probably work for a while. And when you burn it up, I'd probably replace it. You can get these for around uh, six or eight dollars at Harbor Freight. I'd probably replace it with this one. It's a little more robust. All right, so let's pop the hood on this thing. It's got a nice little guide right here for setting up uh, wire speed and everything like that. And I noticed by popping this up, it's got a uh, O30 and O35 grooves on here, so that's kind of nice. All right, so I'm gonna feed the wire through here and uh, we're gonna try this little welder out. Well, to tell you the truth, I never picked up the manual till the next day. Pretty basic manual, but towards the end, there's some helpful tips if you're picking up one of these welders for the first time and never welded. This kind of gives you some helpful hints for uh, looking over your welds and practicing and uh, some good advice in there. So if you get a chance, look at the last few pages. It's got some good helpful tips. All right, did a little test weld. Cranked this thing up to, I think, setting between I and J and around eight for the speed. And this is just a scrap of quarter inch I had to kind of rusty, I cleaned it off a little bit, but it's pretty happy. It's actually got quite a bit of power. I've always found that with flux wire, it actually welds a little bit hotter than um, amperage wise than uh, solid wire. But uh, we're gonna dial this thing back to the setting for eighth inch. And I got a little scrap piece of practice metal right here, eighth inch cut down. And uh, we're gonna join these two pieces together and see how it does. So for 030 wire, it looks like eighth inch is Wire speed is six, and it looks like the settings for amperage is between E and a half and F and a half. That's how they got it set up on there. So wire speed six, E and a half and F and a half. We'll try the E and a half first and see how it goes. Common saying, if it's got slag, you drag. So just keep that in mind, guys, if you're running with a uh, flux wire, you wanna keep it up and pull it commonly rather than uh, push. Here we go. I know a lot of people think of these flux welders as just junk and entry level welders and they're probably right but keep in mind I built the entire sawmill from start to end with the Lincoln Weld Pack 100 flux welder and I've had zero problems with any welds breaking. The mill is still working perfect to this day. I'm chip off some of that slag and I'll bring you guys in for a close up. Hey you know what? It looks pretty damn good. some 3 16 metal here we're gonna cut a slab of this off and uh, see how it does that's what this thing claims it's rated to gonna set this thing up for 3 16 with 030 wire looks like wire speed 8 to 10 let's go for 8 try that out and uh, between G and I for amperage G and I is pretty wide range so let's go for H and call that good. Goes down to J, whatever that is. So we're gonna go on H right there. So we're not fully maxed out on amperage yet. All right, here's the 3 16 plate we're gonna weld together. Got uh, it kind of cut to a V, just so we can really get a nice deep weld in there. Seems plenty hot to weld that. No problem at all. I think that's plenty good for any repairs around the house. So that thing seems to be plenty hot for welding 3 16 Like I said, I chamfered it a little bit to get the deep weld in there, but we're still got a little bit more in amperage to go on this thing. I think you could definitely weld a quarter inch single pass on this thing if you chamfered it and I cranked it all the way up. Um, of course, maybe in the next video we'll do some welds and uh, do some acid etch just to make sure that it actually can handle that. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, 
It's the quarter inch T-joint test and uh, do a little welding here. That's pretty damn clean. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that for you guys. All right, you guys, so it worked pretty damn good. I'm happy with it so far. Time will tell with all these welders, like I said, with the Titanium 200 has been rock solid. The Omni Pro has been rock solid. And time will tell with this guy, but I feel it's got pretty decent build quality for what it is. I think it's going to be a perfect welder for somebody that just wants to start getting into welding and doesn't want to break the bank on it. For the 170 or something I paid for, it's not that bad of a welder. Actually, it's pretty damn good. Being an inverter, it's awesome. It's 15 pounds. Uh, it's a little bit uh, more stable arc and everything being an inverter. It just welds nicer. Uh, flux, like I said in the past videos, I'm not a big fan of flux wire, but you know what? It's got its place. Good for out in windy conditions, it's decent for uh, rusty metal. And I think this is gonna be great for things like packing up to my sawmill where I don't wanna have to pack a bottle, I just wanna weld some stuff together. It's got plenty of power for being a 110 welder. Um, it seemed to be it handled that 3 16 no problem. So I think it's got its place. I think it'd be great for entry level welder for some people. It's also gonna be probably a pretty good field welder. Something like, okay, uh, maybe see how it runs on generator, extension cords, maybe a power inverter. Might be a pretty rad setup. Like I got a Ford, it's got dual batteries and it's a big diesel. Run this thing off a two or 3000 watt uh, inverter. Maybe that might be pretty rad. Maybe you'll try that out. But in the next video, we're gonna go over a little more detail and some tips on welding with flux. And uh, we're going to do some cut and acid dust tests to see how this thing's really welding in all the joints. See how if it's getting right down to the T-joints and things like that. So we'll do a little acid dust test in the next video. Um, yeah, go over it. We're going to pop the top on it, take off the cover, and take a look at the electronics inside and see what it looks like in there. And see if we can modify it possibly for gas. I know the stinger that comes on here is definitely not set up for gas. It doesn't have the holes in it. So we'd have to replace the stinger. I've priced them out. You can get them for like a replacement for a Chicago electric one. I think an eight foot lead on it for 40 bucks. And I found a gas valve for 10. So it's not gonna break the bank to modify. It will add some extra cost. Pull the cover off, look at the circuit board over closely. And uh, you know, some of you guys are more into electronics. I know kind of a little bit about, but not much. But some of you guys might get, some, get a kick out of seeing some of the internals in here and see if it looks like it's good build quality or not. Yeah, so I'm gonna pack it to work tomorrow run it through the ringer there and weld some different stuff but you know what 15 pounds is pretty awesome like look at this it's insane like that's how many welders can you grab and do that with you know so i'm gonna throw it in the back of my car and uh you guys stick around check out the next video until then take care guys bye